Welcome to the Totally Awesome Outdoor Show. Well, I'm here, deep in the Surrey hillside, beautiful wooded hillside of French and Trout Fishery, where I'm going to go trout fishing, try and catch a rainbow trout on a very inhospitable day. I use a fly rod, tiny little fly there. You might get lucky, there's a lot of wind, there's a storm coming in, and rain. It's all against me, but I'm going to catch one, show you how to kill it, show you how to gut it, clean it, fry it. Hell! I'll even show you how to eat it. Let's get fishing. The trout I'd seen moving were right on the far bank. So with all this bush and vegetation around the back of me, I had to watch my back cast and get the fly as close to the opposite bank as I could. They were just patrolling, I guess picking up insects along that edge. But remember you're dealing with the people that make the totally awesome fishing show, our sister channel. So yes, it took me a little while, but I did get hooked up to a rainbow trout using a very small, I think it was a shellback uh, shrimp. Anyway, with the fish hooked up, it was, as we say, fighting all the way to the frying pan. The main thing is, get that fish in the net, and then you've got your meal. Catching it is one thing, making sure you've got a fish to kill, skin, cook, gut is another. Get in that net. Yeehaw! There is our dinner. Well, there we go. A prime example, a rainbow trout from Frencham Trout Fishery, deep in the Surrey Hills. Beautiful woodland here. Very, very, consider myself a bit lucky to get this one because the weather's on the change. Now, this is an ideal size. If you're out hunting in the bush and you need heat of trout, you don't want a huge, great big trout. In fact, that's enough for probably three people. But the first thing I could do is just show you basically what you want to do, I've already banged that one on the head, but, but a lot of people, they, I suppose they think they just come in the supermarket and they pick up a packet of frozen stuff, hermetically sealed, and that's that's how God made them. No, no, God made them live, and that's the man to kill them. Get yourself one of these, anything heavy implement would do. This is called a priest. I made this when I was 14 years old, unfortunately haven't yet lost it. Piece of mild steel, at school, it was a project, still going, it's a basher for a priest being the religious person of whatever denomination he may be, this priest, and gives you the last rites when you're about to die. And that's why they call this the priest. This one is dead. When you hit any fish to kill it, hit it right across the top of the head, generally in line with the eyes. Don't tap it. I've seen people do this, and the poor old fishy's flapping around for a while. Get hold of it, and... That was a skull going. Take two. You can't go wrong with that. I know this is a dead one, but that's how hard you've got to hit it. You've got your trout killed, you're ready to gut it, clean it, and then skin it. I'll show you how I do it. Okay, to gut and clean that trout first, you're going to want one of these. A sharp knife. To make it sharp, you can use a steel. This is actually literally a steel, tiny ridges going that way. And like Granddad used to carve his Christmas dinner, that's what they used to do to sharpen that. You can use a stone. I recommend washing the, the blade after you use a stone. The steel's nice and clean. Use them in the kitchen. Chefs use them. Just do this crisscross motion. And that is certainly enough to clean this trout. You can also get those regular kitchen cutting devices where you draw the blade. Sharpen it, sharpen it, sharpen it. And then make sure if you're out in the woods, wherever you are, out in the field you want a flat surface to do this not all stones everywhere I bought with me obviously a piece of wood because I wanted a flat surface just to show you guys and this way you'll make a nice neat job of it okay here's your rainbow trout and this is where you need a flat surface first if you're going to travel with it anywhere and you're not going to cook it immediately you need to clean it so take the knife in that vent area and run the blade through the ventral fins right up the cavity, opening it out like this. Get your hand in there and get all the gunk and guts out. Not difficult, not exactly with a squeamish, but 
I will show you something just there. Let's pull it out, rip it out. That is how small, not that piece, that piece, that's how small that trout's heart is. Very, very small pump for a relatively large fish. Now, get the guts out. They can go back in the river, back in the lake, they're biodegrade. Or if you're at a fishery, obviously it goes in the uh, waste receptacle. Now you need to split out the backbone here, just not the whole bone. You just run your knife along there, but turn it around this way, and you're going to get that blood out the back, generally by running your fingernail along it, just like this. All comes out. If you can do this at the water side, so much better. I'm just doing it here because it's very, very windy today and I'm going to get sound in the mic. And obviously out in the woods, there isn't a kitchen. The woods is the kitchen. Now that's all clean. Now you can bake this fish whole if you want, wrap it in foil, or you can fillet it. And I'll just show you now how to fillet it. Start with a knife blade and just around the back of this fin here, I'm going to cut that down right through until I, I just feel the bone. And then around the, on the back here, now watch with your hands when you're using a sharp knife. You just start a little point in there. This is how I do it. I'm not saying that everybody's the same. It's pretty much a basic way of doing it. And then run that blade just along the edge of the backbone. You're just trying to make a split on the top edge of the backbone like this. You can feel the blade of the knife just tickle along there and gradually you'll be able to trim that meat away from the bone just like this. You can hear it clipping the bones. It's going to come out the bottom there and there you can see beautiful clean meat. Now I've left quite a bit of meat on the bone there because I'm just trying to not use it as a debone. I'm looking for one piece just to show you how to cook. Let's put this one away for a minute. Now you've got the belly cavity there. I find there's not a lot of meat on that belly, belly cavity so I would take that off. It's a sort of white bit there you see. That can go away as well. So now you can cook this as it is. You can fry that you can flour it and fly it neat, or you can skin it, which is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to make a little cut there, hold the blade flat, and then you draw the, the skin, just moving the knife gently, like this, almost against the skin, and you're using this skin here to pull with, get your thumbnail in there. Some people actually put, like this, a hole in there, just to give them a bit of a grip, like this, and you're wiggling the skin, there. The skin's come off completely, and that's left me with a fillet, which I can then trim up. And out in the woods, don't forget, anything you, you throw back in the river is going to be fine. Now, you can go along here with a pair of tweezers and put out small bones, but I'm just going to show you how to, roughly how to cook it. I'm going to cut this into cubes, like this. Now you can see there's plenty of meat there. There's six pieces. I'm going to give this a wash. And then I'm going to add my little bit of seasoning. I'm going to actually make this one a curried rainbow trout with some ginger. That's stuff you can take with you in small canisters, in the field, in your knapsack, in your backpack, and you could do this. Right, there we go. I've got my frying pan. Obviously, it's be small. I've got some water with me. Get it from a river, get it from the lake, get it from a clean source. I'm washing it all. Just going to drain it off. And you can, if you want, Get a bit of paper towel like this and just dry that excess off there like that. You put all this in your knapsack. It depends how chefy you want to get. Okay, so I've dried it all off. Now I'm going to add my seasoning with this and I'm going to keep it really basic. As you can see, it's all there, pretty ready to go. But I'm going to get some mild curry powder. Just shake it, just very lightly. Now, I'm doing this in the pan, you can do it where you want. Just a little bit of curry powder there. It just gives a little bit of an edge to an otherwise fairly bland fish. And here, let's measure. This is a camping bushcraft teaspoon of ginger. 
shake that in there. It's as much or as little as you want, okay? Quite a bit of ginger. Now, you know I'm using the frying pan before I actually start cooking it up with oil. I want to mix that bit of curry into the meat. I could push it in the meat. That's it. Yeah, I can smell that now. Lovely chubbly. Right. Now, you want to get a dish, or in my case, I just happen to be in the bush with a plate. As I say, I'm just doing this to show you. You can put it on a piece of tin foil. It's all stuff you can fold up. So that's all ready. That's all seasoned. I'm going to dry this off, put some oil in it, and get it on the cooker. Bit of cooking oil, virgin oil, about two tables, maybe a little bit more, three tablespoons in there. Get that onto the fire. I've actually bought the camping stove out of my boat just for this, for quickness, because I'm under the canopy of this old wood fishing lodge, and it's real borderline on the weather at the moment. I'm hoping I'll get this done before it tips down with rain. It's already blowing pretty hard, so I'm lucky to even catch that trout. I'm just letting that cooking oil heat up there. Now, just be advised that it might take a little bit more heat to get that going because you're going to have stuff like wind. I'm in the shelter, as I say, this old wood fishing lodge, so I'm trying to keep out the wind just so the flame picks up. You'll hear it bubbling and crackling away, and you'll know then that the oil is getting hot. Now, one thing I will say with fish, it doesn't take very long. Because I've cubed these up, I would suggest five minutes, four to five minutes with them, just turning occasionally. And don't forget, if you did have it on another, let's say, a metal plate, which you're trying to keep hot, it still cooks, fish still cooks. Better to cook it, but not ruin it. So give that a minute or so for that cooking oil. It's getting lovely and hot there now. So really quick, and especially if you let the, get down to the embers on a wood fire, if you're, you're out with your bush fire, let those embers go down, you don't get covered in smoke, you'll find it very, very hot, and it will cook quickly. Okay, the other thing is I'm going to do is I'm going to put all these in fairly quickly because by the time you get to the tenth piece, the first piece is starting to cook. I can smell that ginger, the garlic, the curry. There's some other guys fishing on the lake out there. There's every chance I should be able to earn myself a few bob and sell these people a piece of curry rainbow trout caught literally 15 minutes ago. I'll probably tune that down a little bit. And again, it's something you can judge yourself. You're going to move it to the side of the fire, or you can make it, you can build a, a stone circle and, and put a griddle across it like that to get your pan height. So let's get that cooking like that. Oh man, if you only had smell vision on this camera, that is really nice. looking good but listen if you get little containers like this that fit inside your knapsack you can take even smaller ones than this we could use a old film canisters anything small and you can just take a tiny piece of seasoning tiny piece of curry powder get yourself almost one of these with enough cooking oil in there make sure the top sealed tape it up maybe you know to put it in your knapsack you've got everything you need you've got to have your little cookers or your fire and your fire starting kit you, everything you need is there you might just want to make a little bit better flavour by putting extras in there, salt, peppers, like I've got ginger, curry powder. Just when you think you're measuring, uh, maybe it might be just one or two of you out in the bush, a couple of tablespoons full of everything, and that really, that's all you need. So it's not like you're packing a load of cooking utensils. We're not talking chefy, we're talking just doing regular cooked trout that you might catch in a river or a stream or a lake, and you just want to add, put a, add a little bit of edge to it. Right, ready to turn this now. Right, there we go guys, all done. Time to put the fish on the plate before this storm comes in. 
I've got a piece of paper towel there. Again, you can fold all that up and get it in your knapsack. Little bits and pieces like that make life so much easier. These are lovely cubes of meat. What I'm doing is I take it out of the pan. I'm just drawing it through the oil and juice to get the maximum amount of flavour out of that ginger and curry. Only one thing to do, add my mouth. Now, it smells great. Oh, you cannot beat fresh fish, 15 minutes old. Mm. And who'd have thought, I can turn this with a tiny little fly, you see it just on the top there, into a gourmet milk.